Today we'll be setting up a static IP address using NetPlan. And you can set this up on any Linux distribution that supports NetPlan. Today I'm using Ubuntu 22.04. First you'll want to launch a terminal and then go over to the NetPlan directory by typing in cd space etc etsy slash NetPlan slash and press enter. And once you press enter, you'll be in the NetPlan directory as denoted here. This is where all the configuration files exist for NetPlan and will allow you to make configuration changes for the, the local computer or server. And before we open up a file and set up a static IP address, let's make sure that we first look up information about our current network settings because we'll need them. You can do that by typing IP space A and pressing enter. And there's quite a bit of information available in here, but what I'm looking for specifically is the network adapter that I'm using. So the very first thing that I have here is low, which is a loop back device and is not what we want. That's to help a service local host. But number two here, which is listed as ENP0S3, is the correct adapter, at least for me. You can check by plugging in and unplugging and watching this go from up to down, figuring out which adapter you've just unplugged. Again, the network adapter for me is ENP0S3, which I'll have to make note of because I'll need this whenever I'm setting up my static IP address. The second thing I want to look at is to make sure that my connection is on the correct subnet that I would expect because by default, Ubuntu and most distributions use DHCP by default, which means a router assigns the IP address directly to the system without the user having to do anything. But since we want to specify our own IP address today, we want to make note of the subnet. So mine in this case is 172.168.1. Some number. I'll be able to fill in the last three numbers. I can also see that it's of a 24 base here, which just means it's of a type subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which again, I'll need to make sure I know for later. Again, make sure you're recording this for your own system and not copying what I have here because more than likely they will differ. And that's really it for my network at least. I don't have any other network adapters. They would be denoted here by additional lines and three, four, so on and so forth, depending on how many network adapters you have. And that's why it's very important to get the right network adapter name. All right, with that information captured, I'm gonna do ls, which will show me files in the current directory. And I notice that there's only one file here. YAML just stands for yet another markup language and is a type of configuration for NetPlan. You might see other files in here, but one to avoid is the 50 cloud init file. Don't make edits to that one because it gets a little tricky to put a static IP address in there. I suggest doing it in this file here, or if you don't have any files in there, you can also create your own, create whatever name you want. Just make sure to start it with something like 01, 02, some number, so it knows a priority. But as long as you have at least one dot, YAML file, it will be read in by NetPlan and used. So since I do have this 01 network manager .yaml file, I'm going to open that up with my favorite text editor. You'll want to use sudo to open up the file because you will need administrator privileges in order to make edits. And I'll use nano and open up that file that we just talked about, the 01 network manager all.yaml. I'll press enter type in my password for my administrative user, and now I'm in the file. If you went ahead and made it this far, make sure to smash that like button for me as we continue on editing the system so it has a static IP address. I'm going down a few lines in here. This line right here just means that there's a network definition using version two of the renderer called Network Manager, which is what controls our network. And then below that, we'll wanna make sure everything's in line here and add something called ethernets. By inline, I just mean the spacing is important. Notice how there's a few spaces, about three spaces here. These configuration parameters should line up. So with a colon, another space, again, we wanna get spacing right or else this config file will not be read in properly and changes will not be as you want. Then I'm gonna press enter and line it up so that I'm right underneath the H, about five or six spaces in, and then type the ethernet adapter that I recorded from earlier. Mine was ENP0S3. I'm gonna put a colon here and press enter again. And I'm gonna space so I'm underneath the P this time and type in DHCP4 with another colon and then space no. This will just denote that we don't want to dynamically allocate our IP address anymore. We don't wanna use DHCP4. Again, make sure the formatting's the same. 
and then again, press enter. Then we're gonna line things back up and type in addresses. Again, with a colon and a space, this is where you get to specify the static IP address that you want to use. So my subnet was 172.168.1, and then I can specify the last byte of the IP address that I want to use. So the static IP address I want to use is four, and I'm gonna put my subnet mask in by doing slash and then typing 24, which was also supplied to us in the IP8 command that we looked at before. If you don't understand this format, make sure to go look up subnet masks. That way you know what to put here. But by default here, most networks use the 24 or what's equivalent to the 255, 255, 255, zero subnet. Next, we'll specify the gateway. So again, we're gonna space over until we're underneath the A this time. And now I'm going to specify the default gateway or route that we wanna use. With newer NetPlan configuration files, you have to do it this specific way. The old method is deprecated and does not work with gateway four. This is basically the router that's going to assigns IP addresses and manages them. We'll want to start typing in routes with the colon. We'll press enter. And again, we're gonna space until we're underneath the U this time. Do a dash space two colon. We're gonna make this the default gateway. So we'll type in default. We'll press enter and then space all the way until we're underneath the T in two and specify what that default gateway is. So via, since my subnet is of the 172.168.1, more than likely it's going to be 172.168.1.1 for me. And I know that's right because that's what my router is assigned to. Of course, this is only if you have a gateway to enter, most of us will. And finally, we can specify any name servers we have. This time I wanna line up with the R in routes and type in name servers with a colon at the end. And I'll space until I am underneath the S in name servers. And there's two options you can put in here. There's the search option, which can be used with multiple domain names so that DNS queries append in a specific order which they are entered. So for example, if you had two subdomains like a development environment and a production environment, you could specify the search option with those multiple domains. I'm not going to show you how to do that one because I just wanna supply domain name servers. Under the S, I'm gonna type in addresses again, put a colon and another space. I'll need some brackets here. In here, you're gonna specify the two DNS servers you want. If you don't have two, you can specify only one. Doesn't matter. It's nice to have two to have a fallback. I'm just gonna specify Google's domain name server for this example. So that's 8.8.8.8 .8 and the secondary one's going to be 8.8. .8. Dot four, dot four. Notice how there's a comma in between the two to denote that there's two separate domain name servers. And that's really it in order to set things up here to have a static IP natively on your Linux device, which is using that plan. And I'm gonna make these changes by saving and exiting out of this file. Control X here in nano. So do I wanna save the modified buffer? Y for yes. I'm gonna press enter to override. And with the file saved, we're going to test our configuration. So we can do this by typing in sudo netplan try. This command will go through our configuration file and just make sure there's nothing wrong with it before applying it as the next network configuration with the static IP address that we have set here in Linux. So let's press enter and see if things are correct. I didn't get any errors. So it says, do you want to keep these settings? Press enter before the timeout to accept the new configuration. Changes will revert in some time here which I think is about two minutes from the start. If there are no errors, this is what will show up. So we can press enter and it says configuration accepted. So there's also another way just to apply the changes without actually trying. I don't suggest doing this because if there is something wrong with the configuration file and you apply it, you might lose an internet connection. So if you're remoting into this setup, you could screw your network up. Anyways, sudo netplan apply applies it directly without checking things. It might give you an error, but it doesn't really care about the errors. So we'll check our network settings again with IP space A and check to see if in fact our new IP address was applied. And sure enough, if we look down here, we'll notice we have 172.168.1.4 on the 24 base subnet, which is the 255.255.255.0. 
on the adapter ENP0S3, which is the one I had set in the configuration. Your information, of course, might be different depending on what you're trying to set your static IP address to. Amazing work if you made it this far. You've successfully set up a static IP address on your local computer as well as with your network. Now this doesn't guarantee that your router is going to assign the same IP address to the computer every time. So you might wanna make sure that you also reserve this IP address in your router as well. So no other device can be served this IP address. And that's really it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord. Make sure to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.